So this is my solar powered gate opener and I'm using a lithium iron phosphate battery and we reviewed this two and a half years ago. And this is a south facing corner so it gets bombarded with heat. You can see the UV degradation and I'm hoping cell degradation. So what we're gonna do today is see how much the capacity has faded over two years. And this is one of the lowest quality batteries you can find. It does not have low temp charging protection. Also, we had it outside during two winters. So it also charged and discharged in the extreme cold. Now I did not expect it to last this long and it still works. One time it did not work and it just had to be charged up and it's been working ever since. That was about a year ago. So I am thinking it's degraded a lot though, like 30 or 40%. But yeah, we will see in a, our capacity test. I was hoping it would die and then I could make a fun video, but it just keeps going. 14.5 volts and it's charging. So we're gonna charge it up to 100% and then do our capacity test. Watch it break during this test. It works for two and a half years and then I break it. That would be really funny. Look at how bad this thing looks, you guys. And this isn't even sealed and it works. It's incredible, man. These are very hard to kill compared to a lead acid, man. And now it's fully charged. We have a CBA4, we need 4.8 amps. All right, we'll come back in five hours and see what the results are. So we have some results. We got 22.5 amp hours. That is 96% of its rated capacity. That is absolutely incredible. I was not expecting these results. And there are degradation rate charts in studies that show if you keep these at a high temperature and at a high state of charge, the degradation rate will increase. But as you can clearly see over two years of Las Vegas in a corner with the sun just bombarding it all day, we've only lost 6%. That's so good. I can't freaking believe it. So I'm actually gonna hook this back up and see how long it will last for. In another two years, we'll do another capacity test and see how well it does. Now this was a fun test because I did know that besides other things that can hurt these batteries, that having it at a high temperature, a high state of charge can increase the rate of degradation, but it increases the rate of calendar aging. And over time, these naturally lose capacity. So I really wanted to see what these test results were just to know how bad it really is. And honestly, that's not that bad. Now the cool thing about this test is a lot of people see those studies where it's a laboratory setting and they keep these cells at like 60 or 70 degrees Celsius and then they cycle them or they keep them at a high state of charge. And the degradation rate in those studies is massive. But for most people on this planet Earth, you're probably not gonna get it hotter than I did. Here in Las Vegas, it will be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit all night, and it will be like 117 to 120 degrees during the day. It gets so freaking hot out there, I thought, that it would degrade this thing like crazy, but I was totally wrong. It did pretty good, I can't believe it. And it got rained on. I really tried to kill it, but man, this thing is gonna keep working. Now let's talk about what actually kills these. And the only thing that I've been able to do to actually kill a lithium iron phosphate battery, besides blowing it up in some of my videos. So the one thing that kills these is by discharging them to 0% and then leaving them for months. That will permanently damage your battery and you'll lose that capacity for all time and the performance will be lower and possibly it will be unsafe to cycle. And the battery management system cannot catch that. It will catch the low voltage disconnect, it will disconnect the loads, but if you leave that battery in that low state of charge, it will discharge itself over time and that will destroy the battery. So that is the number one thing. There's lots of batteries in this workshop that I did a capacity test on. I dropped it down to 0% and then I threw it in my backyard. And in three months, it was completely destroyed. That's the only way I've been able to kill one of these things. Everything else, the battery management system can take care of. And even this one does not have a low temp charging protection circuit, but we're not charging it very quick with that small panel out there. So even when it's really cold, it's not causing that much damage, but again, 
again, that's permanent damage and you'll never get it back. So as long as you keep your batteries fully charged when you store them, you should be good to go. Even Tesla has a lithium iron phosphate model three and they recommend that one to charge to 100%. A lot of people read the studies for NCA and NMC, which are other lithium ion chemistry variants. And they say, oh, I should only charge to 80% or 90%. And that is false. If you have lithium iron phosphate, charge to 100%. And some sources do recommend lithium iron phosphate to store at 50% state of charge. But again, I do not want to risk that, especially in my workshop. I'm testing lots of batteries. So when I'm done with one, I charge it to 100% and then I throw it in the backyard and then I give it to my forum members as a donation. But as long as they're fully charged, they will survive survive my workshop. Now, a lot of people like to baby these batteries thinking that it's going to last a long time, but you want to know what's actually going to kill your lithium iron phosphate is not the cycling, not the temperature, not how fast you charge or discharge because it has a battery management system to prevent excessive charge and discharge rates, but what's going to kill it is the calendar aging. The natural rate of degradation over time will kill your battery before cycling with solar ever will. But this only applies to solar, which is typically under a 0.2 C rate. If you're over two or three C, that's gonna degrade your battery. But not for solar, if you keep it in a nice cool climate, it's gonna last a long time in calendar aging. The natural degradation of the cell itself over time will kill it before you ever will. So my recommendation is charge to 100 percent discharge to zero and cycle between those and then if you store it charge to 100 percent and check on it every couple of months make sure it's staying fully charged sometimes a bms will use a lot of current and that could kill your battery so keep an eye on the voltage every couple of months and make sure it's fully charged when it's in storage and that's pretty much it i hope you guys like the video and i'm still blown away that we got six percent capacity fade. So I'm going to hook this back up right now. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.